welcome to this uh, lecture 23 on uh, groundwater hydrology and here in this lecture we will uh, complete the from miscellaneous sources which we have started in the previous lecture. So, that we will be completing that we will be continuing with and completing then followed by attenuation of uh, this groundwater pollution and uh, underground distribution of groundwater pollutants. So, these are the topics which we will be covering in this lecture and uh, moving on to this groundwater pollution from miscellaneous sources. So, we will be in the previous class ok. In the previous class in the previous lecture we discussed about the the various uh, causes such as urbanization the miscellaneous uh, causes of ground water pollution such as urbanization surface spills and surface discharges, stock piles and septic tanks cesspools. So, today we will uh, go to this uh, roadway de-icing followed by saline water intrusion. this is just listed here. So, will be discussed in detail, it will be discussed in detail in another module, another separate module. We are just listing here. So, it will be followed by two more uh, the causes miscellaneous causes that is uh, interchange through wells followed by surface water. So, these are the for uh, remaining causes under the miscellaneous sources we will be discussing today. Now, coming to this uh, roadway de-icing so this is very essential in winters especially in areas in locations experiencing snowfall.
snowfall and other uh, solid forms of precipitation. So, in this so to remove the ice certain uh, de-icing agents are uh, spread on the road roadways and uh, this one so the so certain salts are uh, spread on the roadways so as to uh, remove the ice from the roads and uh, this the salt application salts used for uh, de-icing the application ranges from is 2 to say 11 metric tons per I am sorry this is the British ton which almost is the same as the metric ton. So, that is a uh, per single lane or say per lane per kilometer in the winter season. So, therefore, so th what uh, this does is so the the main salts are NaCl sodium chloride that is sodium chloride and uh, followed by CaCl2 and uh, this one so so these salts they will percolate into the ground water and then they will increase the the salinity as well as the chloride and uh, sodium and calcium content. So, that is uh, it is very important to consider this in the that is abatement or reduction of uh, the pollutants. So, next that is uh, saline water in uh, intrusion. So, that will be discussed separately in a uh, module in a uh, new module. Then now we will go to the interchange through wells. So, here so these wells offer vertical connection highly permeable vertical connections among various aquifers. So, in this so therefore, what happens is so through these wells. So, the pollutants enter from one aquifer to another aquifer through the through these uh, wells. Now, let us discuss two separate cases as given by uh, this one that is uh, the so the so ground water pollution through wells the first case is when the case 1 when uh, ground water table is above the piezometric surface
So, again so for both this and case 2, say when the ground water table is below the, the piezometric surface and for both these cases they are taken from the same source that is uh, Todd et al. Uh, 19 from 1976. Now, let us consider this case 1. So, here, so this is the ground surface and uh, this is a well in this case. So, this is the water table. Whereas, the piezometric surface that is uh, below the water table. So, this is the piezometric surface and let us indicate this as a P s. So, in this case, so this is a confined aquifer and uh, in between there is a clay layer And then let us consider just one confined aquifer and one unconfined aquifer. So, here what happens is, so because the piezometric surface is below the water table, so there will be flow into the well. So, this is the ground water flow. And along with this, the pollutants also are uh, flowing. So, this is the unconfined aquifer. And here it is the confined aquifer. And this is the the impervious strata and uh, in such case what happens is so this uh, along with ground water so the the pollutants will move that is uh, downward in a downward direction and then so they get uh, distributed to this lower confined aquifers so this is case 1 then the ground water table is above the piezometric surface. Now, let us also consider this case 2, when this ground water table is below the piezometric surface. So, this is the ground le level and then in this case the water table, I am sorry the piezometric surface is above So, this is the piezometric surface which is indicated by, by the abbreviation P s and then so there is a water table which is below the piezometric surface and uh, there is a 
let us consider one so this is a clay layer and then so this is the unconfined aquifer this is the confined aquifer so in this case because the piezometric surface is above the the water table so in this case there will be flow from the well into the aquifers and in this case because the piezometric surface is above so the the pollutants move from that is the in an upward direction and uh, so these pollutants get uh, distributed in uh, the upper aquifers so like this so the the wells so they result in is uh, they cause pollution through that is uh, when in two cases the first one is when the ground water table is uh, above the piezometric surface and the second case is when the ground water table is below the piezometric surface now let us come to the last uh, cause of uh, among the miscellaneous sources that is a surface water so in this uh, surface water so this uh, the polluted surface water bodies polluted water bodies become sources of this ground water pollution so in this case let us say there is a so this is the the ground surface and then so there is a well with a strainer here so this is the ground surface and uh, here so there is a polluted surface water body so this is a polluted water body and in this case and uh, so this is a pumping well and through this so this is the the water level in the pumping well and here so below this uh, so this is the pumping water level so this is the pumping level and uh, suppose the original so this is the original water table so in this case from below the this pumping level the 
this uh, so the the groundwater enters the from the polluted water body obviously so therefore the pollutants they will enter the uh, well and then so they will cause the they will cause the groundwater pollution so these are uh, some of the causes of uh, the miscellaneous sources of groundwater pollution now we will move on to this uh, attenuation of uh, attenuation so that is uh, reduction of uh, groundwater pollution so this reduction so this whenever there is a polluted groundwater we need to take all appropriate measures so that we can reduce this uh, reduce or attenuate this groundwater pollution and there are various mechanisms are there and uh, so these mechanisms so the are firstly it is the filtration then the second one is the sorption the third one the third mechanism is the chemical processes the next mechanism is the micro microbial or microbiological decomposition and last but not the least it is the dilution so these are the mechanisms which will reduce the the groundwater pollution now let us discuss these mechanisms one by one so firstly we will consider this uh, filtration so this filtration so uh, it removes the suspended materials or suspended pollutants and hence reduces uh, this groundwater pollution so in this case so it can remove particulates of uh, fe iron or manganese and uh, precipitates formed by chemical reactions so 
So, this filtration basically there will be a filter substance filter layer and that filter layer will remove the, the surface pollutants or the, su the suspended pollutants. And uh, that is very important in case of the surface uh, polluted surface water uh, infiltrating into the ground water and then causing pollution. So, that uh, this filtration will take care of that. Uh, okay, so, in this filtration, so the, the polluted surface water infiltration is uh, is impeded. So, now let us come to the second mechanism of attenuation or uh, reduction of this ground water pollution that is the sorption. And within this sorption, so basically, so here that is uh, there are two types of sorption are there. The first one is the adsorption and the second one is the absorption. So, here in this adsorption it is the, so this adsorption is the accumulation of uh, material. So, in this case the pollutant at uh, water solid interface. So, that is adsorption, adsorption and this absorption is the intermixing of uh, pollutant and solute molecules that is known as absorption. So, in this uh, in this sorption process, so the the pollutants the sorptive materials are clays, metallic oxides and hydroxide and uh, hydroxides. So, that is the hydroxides then this uh, organic matter. So, they are used to facilitate the process of sorption or the induce the mechanism of uh, sorption. So, here except chloride because chloride is mostly soluble. So, most of the materials are uh, most of the pollutants are uh, sorbed that means, either adsorbed or absorbed under favorable conditions.
and of course, uh, this one the nitrate and sulphate are uh, sorbed to a lesser degree. So, in this case, so using this sorptive materials that is clays, metallic oxides, hydroxides as well as organic matter. So, most of the materials, most of the pollutants they are uh, made to undergo either adsor adsorption or absorption and thereby, so it is uh, removed. So, this is the second mechanism of uh, attenuation or reduction of this uh, ground water pollution. So, now we will go to the third mechanism that is the chemical processes for uh, pollution attenuation. So, in this the precipitation or say formation of precipitates in ground water occurs when uh, ions are in sufficient quantity. So, there is uh, important ions involved. So, the important ions involved in precipitation reactions are this precipitates. So, there uh, are They are uh, calcium Ca plus 2, Mg plus 2, then the bicarbonate sulphate. And of course, uh, the trace elements. involved are trace elements with uh, precipitation potential are arsenic ion so ions of uh, arsenic cadmium, barium, copper, cyanide, so fluoride, Fe, ferrous and comma ferric, lead, then mercury, molybdenum, zinc and uh, radium. So, the, the ions of these metals as well as the these compounds, so these uh, radicals, so they also have the potential for uh, precipitation. So, in this case, so 
wherever see whenever there is a minimum moisture near free surface near the surface so this precipitation takes place so this is a chemical process so which is a mainly precipitation and uh, in the zone above water table this oxidation is the important chemical process for uh, pollution attenuation so here in this case this complex organic compounds so they undergo oxidation that is a step wise oxidation and eventually they are ready they are uh, they get themselves converted to co2 and uh, h2o the carbon dioxide and water along with numerous inorganic ions so this is a step wise oxidation process and uh, here so this uh, additionally oxidation so this is uh, additionally oxidation and reduction occurs along with other chemical processes results in formation of precipitates comma deposits of uh, insoluble trace metals and uh, gases so thereby this is uh, one for uh, radioactive pollutants so this uh, radioactive decay is the the important mode of pollution attenuation as we all know half life period means the particular uh, 
radioactive material it will uh, decay and thereby its uh, volume will be reduced to half. So, now let us go to the other that is a mechanism of uh, attenuation of pollution that is microbial or say microbiological decomposition. So, here basically so this is the it is the ultimate destruct destruction of uh, pollutants due to microorganisms so here this uh, bacteria comma viruses say so, they tend to move slower through porous media than in water. So, this uh, pathogens are largely removed by passage through say one meter of uh, soil containing substantial amount of clay and silt. So, basically when this clay and silt, so they, they are uh, fine textured soil. So, when they are present and so, when this bacteria or, uh, and virus they are made to um, uh, pass through them, so then obviously, so they are retained there and thereby the pollution is uh, reduced. And uh, we will now come to the last is one that is the dilution and we all know that the pollutants and uh, the, there is a very famous say that uh, pollution the solution is dilution that is a solution to pollution is dilution. So, in this case the pollutants which are flowing pollutants flowing in ground water
get diluted in concentration by hydrodynamic dispersion. So, here longitudinal and uh, lateral spreading of pollutants takes place. Thereby, thereby reducing the the concentration level of pollutants. So, this is also a very important uh, uh, mechanism of uh, attenuation of pollution. So, now we will go to the last uh, one of uh, the last topic to be covered in this lecture that is the underground distribution of uh, of pollution. So, here suppose there is a waste site and uh, let us say this is the so this is the waste site and then this is the direction of uh, ground water flow direction so then what happens is and uh, of course let us say here there is a A river. So, this is a, a river. So, in this case, so the concentration So, this is uh, A, B, so this is C, so this is D. So, this is E. So, here, so this, uh, so this is taken from the source. So, this figure is taken from the source Legrand 1965. So, here the concentration. A is greater than B, which is greater than C, which is greater than D, which is greater than E. So, whenever there is a, a waste site and uh, in the vicinity of that, so there is a uh, there is a stream or a river and then there is a uh, this general ground water direction, uh, ground water flow direction, then obviously, so, the concentration decreases as we move away from the waste towards the river. So, but still even this decreased concentration itself 
is many times quite uh, significant to cause this uh, full uh, the distribution of uh, the underground distribution of the pollutant as well as eventually the pollution of the water in the river or the stream. So, similarly, there have been other uh, this one. Suppose there is a landfill So, this is a say this is a landfill and in this case, so the the concentration profiles which emanate from this landfill so they are uh, they gradually decrease. as we move away from the landfill. In this case, so this is taken from, so this figure is taken from a, so the, so this is the pollutant plume from a landfill. So, this is taken from a study by Cole in 1975 and in this case, so this is the, so the, the general ground water flow direction then in that di direction. So, the the pollutant plume will uh, so this is the groundwater pollutant plume. Similarly, say here when there are uh, there is another So, suppose this is the waste site and this is a former boundary and then so this is the latter or say present boundary and in this case so this is the if so this is the ground water flow direction. So, this is the enlarging plume and uh, for all this the source is uh, the same study by Legrand in 1965. And then, so for a reducing plume, if it is an enlarging plume, then the area of this uh, pollutant plume increases. On the other hand, if it is a reducing plume, in this case, say suppose this is the waste site then the if the former boundary is uh, this one and the present boundary. So, this is the present boundary or latter say that is the present boundary. So, the present boundary will become shorter whereas, the former boundary is larger. So, this is a case of a reducing plume 
and then uh, so there can also be so also this uh, nearly stable like that so there can be nearly stable plume in which the former boundary as well as the present boundary is more or less the same so this in case of nearly uh, stable plume so the former and uh, present boundary are almost same so this is the source and uh, of course a shrunken plume in that case what happens is so it is basically largely reducing plume wherein the uh, the the present boundary of the plume is drastically reduced so this is the regarding the the ground water pollution that is the underground distribution of the ground uh, this uh, ground water pollution and uh, in the next lecture we will uh, move on to the groundwater quality analysis thank you